Well, hello YouTube. Just thought I'd shoot a quick video of, uh, I guess, uh, this spring summer's catalog. It's the dads and grads edition here. And they just kind of showcase a few tools, maybe give you a couple bucks off. I'm just kind of go through here. First, we start off here with a snap-on set of chisels. I'm not 100% sure if that's really the way to go. It's more of a novelty item. If you, your dad dad really likes snap-on stuff and has to be snap-on, well, maybe that's the way to go. But I think you can probably get as good a product from someone else for a lot less money. Uh, next thing here, non-marring pick set. Uh, back on sale. They had them on sale at Christmas time. So they're probably not a, not a terrible tool to have. Um, they're usually pretty good at you know working on their uh, ergonomics and whatnot so it may be something to look at a couple bucks off not a whole lot and i guess maybe two bucks and five bucks so not saving a lot of money next thing down here are electric miniature screwdriver sets these to me look like they're rebranded i think i've even seen very similar stuff from mac even so imagine if you did some searching on amazon or ebay you'd probably find out who the original manufacturer is and and save yourself a, a pretty penny but uh definitely kind of a nice tool to have um i know a lot of times you know especially working on like a on a phone or small delicate piece of electronics um definitely need that kind of stuff so up here just a, a set of picks see I, I actually like the snap-on picks um they're a little bit smaller seem to be a little stronger stand up stand up pretty well and decent grip I haven't used the, the new handles. I've still got the old style handles with the hard grip and I actually really like those and haven't really wanted to move over to the bigger size stuff here. Moving down, just a different file set. Uh, a little different uh, handle set than they were offering uh, at Christmas time. So I'm not sure. Maybe the machinists and millwrights uh, among us here can comment and tell you which way to go for those like I said to me a file has been a file so I can't say if it's a good deal or not so non-conductive uh, composite needle nose pliers uh, for electrician guys that might be uh, maybe a good tool but I think you guys have your own brands that you really like so it may not be a spoken deal for you or not like I said I I don't work with the high voltage stuff, you know, 12 volts is all I work with. And, well, it's probably a little uh, overkill for doing that stuff. Here they're featuring some uh, breaker bars. Honestly, I never use breaker bars. I find the ratchets hold up just fine enough for the applications I'm using, so um, I'll just continue using those. So, up next, they're uh, featuring the... Uh, I guess you can buy them um, either as your flat tip or your uh, Phillips Instinct soft grip screwdrivers. I'm a fan of them. I know a lot of guys like the hard handle stuff better. Um, originally that's what I was trying to buy, but they didn't have them. So I bought those and they've actually held up well for me over the last 10, 10 or so years. Uh, next down, some of the ratcheting screwdrivers. I, uh, I actually have the top one and so it seems like it works great. It's got a good feel to it, but... I just find uh, where the bit's held, I find I get into problems running with stuff to fit there. So I don't use it as well, often as I probably should. Um, just got a few different uh, options here. Uh, this push-pull spring tool, actually I'm thinking about that might not be a bad idea. I don't really do a lot of uh, drum brake work anymore. Most everything I have is all running disc. And if it does come with drums, a lot of times I change them over to... To disc just for the applications that I'm running them on. Uh, some double ball hex keys. You know, I find this stuff, I have just tons of them, so I've never really looked at them. Uh, the one thing that does kind of catch my eye is just this, uh, this short or shallow distance here. Um, that's something that's a little or unique to this set that may be handy if you're working in a tight place. Um, just something to consider, but like I said, I, I never use this style of key anymore. So like I said, I don't know how exactly useful that'll be, but just kind of one of those things. It's good to know what's out there. And you know, if you're running an application, well, Hey, Snap-on's got one. So uh, moving on to some LED pen lights. 
you know they seem pretty expensive and like i said you can get a stream light for around 30 bucks so it's a lot cheaper and i don't know i i haven't found anything that i like better than the the old uh stream light stylus so i think i'll just stick to using those and they last forever uh dual led cap light uh, seems kind of like a novelty thing. I don't know if you wear a hat all the time, it may work. Like I said, I've never, never used it, and well, they're not including the hat with the purchase, which I don't know. I think if you bought the hat, I think they should throw that in with you uh, for a purchase. You know, it, to me, it seems like a novelty item more than a, a useful item. Uh, magnetic rotating base light. I can see where this is handy. Um, so I'm not sure if it's worth 60 bucks, but like I said, I definitely do see its use. You know, you can stick it up underneath something and have light. You know, if you're a heavy duty guy working under trailers, freeze up your hands. So yeah, I definitely like the idea. I just don't know if I agree with the price. Uh, aluminum lighted uh, level. Let's see. Levels are handy, especially if you have a use for it. Like I said, I just, I've never priced them out, so I don't know if that's worthwhile or not. Uh, if you've got 14.4 cordless tools, um, we've got a few lights to go with that for you. Um, like I said, I don't have any snap on stuff for as far as my cordless tools, so um, not any use to me. Uh, right here, I start off with a, just a memory saver to use your on your 18 volt cordless uh, memory saver. Um, they want s almost 80 bucks for this, and you could buy a Blue Point one that's designed to go into uh, into a cigarette lighter. And for me, I think that's the way to go, especially if you can get an adapter. You can use, either use it in a cigarette lighter, or you can plug it into uh, if you have a I have an old test light that's designed to use either in a cigarette lighter or has clamp grounds to clamp onto a regular battery. And like I said, it's I think it's only like 30 bucks. So to me, I think that's more the way to go than, than something like that because you know they're forever changing batteries styles as you as things progress. Uh, remote starter switch. Remote starter switches are handy, but a, I think you can get them for a lot cheaper if you you just buy a, a no name or just some other brand you don't get the the fancy instinct screwdriver handle but that to me that's more a novelty item than anything um just a few different uh inverter power options so like i said i i don't have a lot of uh i don't have any snap on cordless stuff so like for me it's not anything that catches my eyes uh, i got a few power bit sets blue point um like i said I don't know. Some of the guys that use it might be better, but like I said, I find this stuff is readily available from everybody else and it comes up pretty inexpensive. A lot of times you kind of end up acquiring with other tools. So, um, looks like they've got quick change drill bit sets or bit sets. Um, these with cordless screwdrivers or other power, other power drivers. Yeah, it might work. Like I said, I think if you're drilling stuff, the best tool for the job is a drill. If you use it for impact, then use an impact. So both sets kind of come with both, so I don't see the real need for one or something to make it do and kind of do a half-ass job. On to the next page. So it looks like a line cap stopper set. Um, I've actually heard good things about this stuff, but I, like this is a rebranded tool. If you do some searching on Amazon, I'm sure you can find it with a different name. And like I said, if you find it with a different name, chances are it's going to be less money. And just kind of looks like so you got some pop riveting tools and uh, brake caliper press tool. So they're. Uh, I haven't used uh, this style before, so like I said, I, I can't say one way or the other. I just kind of have an old style um, where you kind of have a plate and take the old brake shoe and screw it together, and that's where you go from there. So the next thing here, just got a assortment of uh, oil uh, filter housing sockets. These are actually very useful tools. 
Um, but I think there's a, an awful lot of uh, other kits out there that do the same thing and save you a few bucks. But like I said, if you're in a place where, you know, sourcing that stuff is a little tougher, then maybe the snap-on's the way to go. Um, see, we got a paintless dent removal tool. I know, from what I've seen with the, the professional PDR guys, I haven't really seen this tool and they're, they're using other other methods. So I guess it, it could work, but I, I don't see it as an end-all, be-all tool. So yeah, maybe you could try it. You know, if it works for you, 100 bucks is a lot cheaper than sending it to a body shop or even having, say, a PDR guy come in and, and fix the dent for you. Well, looks like we've got a couple of... Uh, of knives so I've seen a lot of guys they like the uh, the snap-on knives I think they're made by Kershaw for the most part and from what I heard they make decent knives so now we've got a digital display circuit tester um, I haven't really read up on these ones I'm not sure if they um, I think they are but like I said if you can use them on on computerized uh, circuitry without causing damage. Um, it's kind of one of those things I look into. You gotta be careful where you're sticking your test light. Um, sometimes they can uh, send a little too much, uh, where you put a little, cause damage to the circuitry. So it's been a while since I've played with it. I'm trying to remember the exact terminology for it. But I uh, got some safety glasses. Uh, looks like with built-in ear protection. Uh, that could be handy. Like I said, I don't know, I don't find uh, safety glasses last me very long before you scratch them up and gouge them up. So I kind of like the, the less expensive ones as long as they're, they're comfortable on my face, then then I'll, I'll use them that way. Uh, sight glass, uh, test gauge. So they, yeah, it's always good to have a good quality ear gauge. And like I said, some things you have to be careful when you use them on, like especially the new TPMS stuff. But like I said, I don't know. I I tend to look uh, look to my uh, my patch suppliers, and those guys tend to to keep up on that stuff, and usually have good stuff in their uh, their arsenal. Uh, five pack kneeling mats. So I like the mats, but it's a uh, I think I usually buy mine at Princess Auto and I think they're around four bucks, five bucks. So they're a lot cheaper than that. Fender covers, a uh, good thing to have, especially if you're working on a nice car. So like I said, I don't know what they're worth. You know, they're always just kind of around. So I've never really worried about them. Uh, gloves. Uh, so it just kind of gives you a, a variety. So yeah, I... I bought the the fancy ones once and they didn't last me very long, so I think I pretty much kind of stick to uh, um, the Watson gloves. I find they hold up well for me. Uh, ear protectors, uh, nice thing to have. Uh, fingernail brushes, uh, I don't know if I want to buy a snap-on one. Like I said, a lot of times your Fast Orange and Gojo, they come with them, so they're free. Uh, hand and tool, cleaning towels. So I don't, I don't know what the difference is to make them so much special. Let's see, usually have a rig, a rig's a rig. So I, I like these tote bags. Uh, haven't really measured out to see what size it is. I, I like those for just carrying tools around, especially if you're going on a trip or working in the field. It's just a nice way to keep your tools collected. And I like the the nylon over the. Uh, old metal cases or whatever they just you get a little less rattling and they don't kind of bang things up when you're having them back in your car or whatnot uh blow gun i do like the blow uh the blue point blow guns um they seem to work pretty good but like i said you can get other brands and they work pretty much as good so yeah blow gun's kind of a blow gun and then polyurethane air hose yeah i don't know i kind of like the rubberized ones a little better there's like I said, it's due to your own. It's an easy mount magnetic phone tablet socket. Uh, I guess it could be a, a handy tool, but uh, to me it seems like a novelty item. should be one of those things that they uh, they give you uh, when you buy a, buy a tool. Uh, Snap-on tape measure. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. I think there's uh they're kind of a dime a dozen. Uh, and from my understanding, the guys that use them, they don't work as well as they, they should for what you're paying. Water nozzles, same thing. Like I said, I think you can go to Home Depot or somewhere like that and just get a, a decent uh, nozzle there. Uh, just organization tools. Like I said, I, I don't know. This stuff is really the best way to go. Um, I've got other stuff that I use that I like better. And, you know, as far as pricing goes, it's tough to see. So, yeah, I, I actually kind of kind of like this style here. I can't remember what I paid for my last one. Um, it only holds 12 wrenches. I tend to like the ones that hold, you know, 15 to 16 wrenches because that's... When you get your bigger wrenches, that's what they have. Uh, different holders and parts trays. Eh. So you're running out of room in your toolbox and you don't mind having stuff on the outside then yeah it's probably not too bad but like I said I just I like to keep my stuff secure when I go home at night so uh, a few other options that magna panel tray actually kind of uh, intrigues me but like I said I don't know if I'm I'm willing to put that kind of money out for that purpose We got ratchets, save yourself a couple bucks on ratchets. Looks like that's what they're offering is quarter drive stuff. So I don't know. I think I'd be more interested if it was three eighths. Uh, non conductive confident or composite slim tip screwdriver set. Yeah, like I said. If it's something you use all the time, but I think there's, you know, brands that specialize for electricians, it's probably the way to go. Um, probably save yourself some money and get just as good a feel. Mini file set with the interchangeable handle. Yeah, I like the idea of that stuff. Like I said, I just I don't know if the price is, is worthwhile. Uh, striking fire bar sets. That's always a nice set of tools. Um, they've changed the handle. Like I haven't used a new handle, so I don't know, say one way or the other, but I have the old style handle and I actually quite like them. Uh, four pound dead blow, blow wheel service hammer. Uh, dead blow hammers are always handy. But like I said, I don't know if you want to spend that kind of money on a dead blow hammer. Uh, vacuum cleaners, as I explained explained in a previous flyer, they're kind of a dime a dozen. You can get those from a lot of other other manufacturers for a lot less money. And yeah, I would probably go that way. Multi tool. Uh, Seen a little late to the game for the multi-tool state of the game. Like I said, I even think you can pick that stuff up at Costco, really. So I'm not sure how I'd uh, I'd feel about a snap-on multi-tool. You can get a Leatherman or someone else that's been in the game for a while. They make some pretty decent stuff for that. Uh, Multi-layer foam construction for putting on your uh, creeper or use it on the floor. Like I said, 213 bucks. I don't think I could... Uh, justify uh, spending that kind of money for those kind of mats you can get a lot of other stuff say so creepers are on sale looks like it's just the standard creeper it's not the adjustable headrest uh, save yourself a couple bucks like I said I actually just bought a creeper but I bought one with adjustable headrest but you know from what I've seen these actually stand up really well so yeah so far I'll give you know, my recommendation on a on a snap-on creeper uh, creeper seat, I've actually kind of been thinking about that since you know I'm not working with a hoist anymore, so most of the stuff is on jack stands. Just kind of gets you a little better angle. Um, so I guess I can save a couple bucks on it. Uh, we'll see. Uh, welding equipment. So you get yourself a fancy helmet. Um, but I'm not a welder, so like I said, I'm sure if I was a welder, probably would be buying something else. Like I said, there's a lot of guys that have been in the business for a long time they know their stuff and i would say they're probably the more competitive of the bunch uh, digital tire pressure gauge inflator yeah like i said i i never really got used to using that style so i won't really say one way or the other uh, vacuum pump test kit 
so there you can't you know I don't know if anybody else makes a better one or for the price like I said I, I kind of get a little leery on on that kind of stuff the master oil funnel kit I'm pretty sure that's a rebranded I think you can probably get it off a of Lyle for a fraction of the price uh, this uh, disc brake caliper service set um, I like the idea of it so I don't know if it's going to be everything you need but like I said these are the tools that I break and so I, I definitely I don't have a problem with snap on for this stuff uh, looks like we got a heavy duty end cap uh, filter wrench set um, like I said I think you can probably get something from like Lyle or something like that that works just as good and fraction of the price uh, brake bleeder kits um, I do like these uh, vacuum style bleeder, bleeder kits like I said there's probably other options that are better priced um, save you a couple of bucks like I, I ended up with one of these the last time I was on special um, just because I've, I've wanted one for a while uh, polarized sunglass lenses um, I like polarized sunglasses so and it looks like they're impact resistant so you can use them as a safety glass uh, like I said, it depends on how they fit how they feel that's the kind of the big thing on those uh, they got their work lights on sale again but like I said I don't know for the bang for the buck I don't know if they're worth it uh, different uh, drill bits and I don't know if these are the ones that have the lifetime replacement warranty or not so yeah I think guys that have it they do like it so it may be worth your while for that and then just yeah different air hammer bit sets I don't know I don't know the difference between a good one and a cheap one as far as you know if it gets the job done it gets the job done uh, next thing here we got a butane soldering kit this right here is actually a uh, a rebranded um, Portazol Weller um, the guys that make this one and if you buy it from them it's a fraction of the price like I think I paid 70 bucks for mine and it's the exact same kit and then 18 volt cordless monster lithium adhesive gun kit um, yeah like I said I this is not something I have any any familiarity with so I can't say one way or the other um, more stuff for your 14.4 volt uh, tools so if you've got this stuff uh, this may be of interest to you like I said I don't have anything right now um, I've heard good things about the 14.4 uh, the volt ratchets um, it looks like they've changed between the 3 8 and quarter drive they used to be the same tool with different head uh, but looks like they, they are actually offering a little bit differently uh, underhood light um, yeah they're probably handy like I said I don't know there may be other options for you I'd, uh, just depends on what you have interchangeable 12 volt digital uh, display tester kit I um, guess it'll give you a few different ends for kind of back probing on to wiring harnesses and whatnot to uh, find problems so uh, yeah that could actually could be handy um, seems most of the stuff is fairly expensive but I think there's um, a few other companies that specialize in this stuff and I, I might look in that direction uh, auto ranging multimeter definitely recommend getting a good multimeter um, I'm not necessarily certain that snap on is the way to go with those um, there's a couple big names out there fluke is being one of them um, but I think they have the as big of a uh, an ego when it comes to pricing but like I said um, if you're buying a, uh, a multimeter make sure you spend the money buy a good multimeter um, there's a lot of you know you ones you pick up from Harbor Freight or Prince's Auto Canadian Tire that you know for 20 30 bucks and for your basic stuff like where you're gonna use a test light I would trust them but you know you start getting into some sen sensitive computer computer controlled uh, um, circuitry and I wouldn't want to use it in there uh, battery system tester I don't know if you're in a retail shop and you have to show the customer stuff this may be a way to go but there's a lot of ways to test a battery that are just as effective and way less money uh, 24 volt digital display tester with 4 to 49 volt DC range um, these are kind of handy um, 
but like I said, if you have a good multimeter, you can do everything you can with this or whatever with it. It just depends on ease of use and handiness or whatever. And sometimes that having just a simple setup like that's the way to go. Uh, battery booster cables. Yeah, it's nice to have a nice, decent set of booster cables. I don't know if those are as big as the ones I, I'm using right now, but like I said, good booster cables are something definitely nice to have. Uh, now we're getting into air tool stuff, um, just kind of a variety of stuff. Mini die grinder, like I said, for me, I, I kind of like the Ingersoll Rand stuff or, you know, the CP stuff. They, uh, they've they been in the market for a while and I think most of the uh, big companies just resell a lot of their tools. So just kind of something to look out for. Um, I won't really get into big details. Um, this reminds me of a... An IR orbital that I used to really like using. Actually, this one up here looks more like it, but um, the price is pretty high on it. So, like I said, I don't know how it compares in pricing. It's been a while since I priced it out, but that was kind of something I liked. Um, just a few more variety of air tools. Uh, Buddy has their the air drill. Um, I guess the Chuck style one. He quite likes it. Maybe something to look into if you're looking for an air drill. Like I said, and I don't see any uh, deals on this stuff here. This looks like it's just featured items. And then Super Duty Air Ratchet. So, uh, I don't know, I just found them always quite noisy, so I never actually ended up using the Air Ratchets uh, very often. Um, carbide burr set tool, um, definitely handy, but I don't know if I'd spend the full, full deal on the on the full set I just kind of bought the ones that I used to use a lot and went from that option uh, now we're back into more 14 volt looks like they're selling with the batteries I've, I've actually been hearing pretty decent reviews on their new stuff um, the older stuff I was kind of suspect you know you always see that stuff for sale the guy's trying to get rid of it again so I don't know if it just got bigger better better I don't know I was just always a little hesitant on that uh, looks like Snap-on's entry into your power probe. So they've got a couple little features on it that uh, looks like not too bad a deal. But like I said, the price is still still pretty high. Um, up to you if you want to spend the extra money or just continue with the power probe lineup. And like I said, back to the battery system tester. Like I said, if you're in an application where you need something nice to show into a customer, then yeah, maybe that's something for you. But like I said, if you just don't try to test a battery, there's a lot of options open to you that are a lot less money. And yeah, it looks like there's just you know a few other little pieces here. Sometimes these uh, clamp-on meters are, are handy. Uh, I've got one, but just not snap-on. And like I said, I didn't pay that price for it, so. And then just add yeah, your your 18 volt stuff. You know, I've heard a lot of guys, you know, they kind of say don't buy the 18 volt, stick with the, the 14 4. So just something to think about. Uh, moving on here, back into their torque wrenches, and they're still offering these on sale. I don't know if they're they're just trying to clear out their stockpile of it. Um just saw recently in news that uh Snap on acquired uh, a big name in the torque industry out of uh, the UK and China. Um, I guess you should say they're out of the UK, but they have joint facilities in the UK and China. Um, so maybe that's what they're they're moving towards. I I do like this uh, this TQ style uh, um, torque wrench. Um, I have one and a half inch, and then I have a three eighths version of this for um, more working on engine stuff and stuff like that. Uh, so using the click type type ratcheting torque wrenches, I just find them kind of cumbersome. So like if you're using them on a regular basis, running up to torque and then backing them off all the time, it gets old pretty fast. Like you know, especially if you're say a tire guy and you're constantly torquing wheels. Um, yeah, I would go with this uh, the TQ style where you can you can leave it at the torque and just adjust it from there. Uh, going up back here, we've got a bunch of ratcheting wrenches you know to be honest with you 
I don't know if you really need to spend big bucks on ratcheting wrenches. Um, I've got a lot of just the cheaper gear wrench stuff. I always break my bolts loose with a regular wrench and then switch over to the torque wrench. And I haven't had a problem with my cheap ones. So and you probably save yourself a little bit. And honestly, I, I've just bought the sizes as I've needed them. Uh, more welding helmets. I don't know why I keep featuring stuff over and over again. Put it all together. Uh, I got a welder. I don't know if I'd buy a snap-on welder. I think I would just kind of stick with one of the guys, you know, that are big in the industry. Uh, service trays. Looks like it's got a few features that make it nice to work with. And you adjust it for height and whatnot. I do, I do like my service trays. But like I said, I, I definitely not willing to spend quite that much money on one. And then just a work light with bracket. Uh, I've seen these lights. They put out some pretty good power. But yeah, I don't know. I just if I want to spend that much money. And then it looks like they're just kind of featuring a couple of uh, service carts and scan tools. So they, like I said, I don't think they really offer much for deals unless you kind of deal with the guy on the truck but it's uh it's kind of one of those things they just kind of feature it and get get the question asking and then they uh they offer you a smoking deal quite a bit cheaper than what they're offering on here and make you think like you're getting a smoking deal but yeah that's uh the dads and grads edition of your snap-on catalog with some of their promotional stuff for spring um just thought i'd give you a chance to kind of see what was in there and like I said, comes with an order form, so you can kind of list the part numbers on, and or I guess this is the new product idea. Um, so uh, yeah, if you got an idea for a tool, you can send it in, and uh, we'll give you a couple bucks for your idea. But yeah, if you liked it, just remember to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.